Welcome everyone. Today we have another Genshin Impact News Digest. In this video, we'll look at all the ways to get 90 Crimson Agates to get the tree, the Force Bearing Tree, to level 10, and how to get the most difficult Crimson Agate in the game, which is not shown on the map. After that, we'll look at how to get struck by lightning and also for the special achievement and also for the free primal gems. We'll also be looking into a survey for the Genshin Impact players about what do players think of the Genshin Impact characters, who would you take as your girlfriend, and who would you take as your boyfriend. Those replies are very funny, we'll go through some of those. And finally, we'll look into some of the fun clips shared by the community of our battle and of Kaching over here, which is quite amazing. Now I'm sure most of us have tried and also unlocked this Force Bearing Tree to high levels. And in this particular screenshot, you can see that someone has already achieved level 10 with the Force Bearing Tree. And let's have a look at how is this achievable. So coming over to this particular post by Cosmic Muffin, he showed us how to get the level 10 with Force Bearing Tree. And I made a small summary of what he told us. Now I'm sure most of us know how to get 1 to 79 Quincy Agates from the interactive map, and also how to get 5 Quincy Agates every Monday and also Friday from the Quincy Wish. We'll briefly touch on those after, but right now the focus is how to get the most difficult Quincy Agate. It's by feeding foxes, guys. That's right, it is likely going to take 2 to 5 days for a secret chest reward. I'm still working on mine as well, and it's my first day today. After 2 to 5 days, it's likely it's going to spawn a special chest with a Quincy Agate. And over here, this is what the post was talking about. And we can see over here, his particular screenshot of the untellable tale. This is when you make new friends with the foxes. And let me show you guys a replay of us finding the foxes and feeding them. To find the location for the campsite for the foxes, what we need to do is, we need to teleport to the Statue of the Seven first. And after teleporting, we'll walk straight forward. We'll be looking for a special campsite. As you can see in this replay, I'll show you guys the location of the campsite. You can see that we will not be jumping down, we'll go directly forward. And up on this particular angle, we're going to see two parties. There's one to the left, one to the right. Go to the one to the right, and you're going to see a small campsite. This is the campsite we can feed the foxes. Notice there is an interaction with a cooking bowl. If you go a little forward, you can see there's a feed function. And if we place two berries into the vessel, what's going to happen is, there's a small chance of fox appearing to feed on those berries. Sometimes they appear, sometimes they don't appear. Make sure you do not kill those foxes. Notice that Paimon is saying, it's so quiet, are those foxes too shy to come to us? Sometimes they will come to you, sometimes they won't. And if you kill those foxes, you have to restart this whole chain again. And it is believed this will take at least from 2 days to 5 days to finish this achievement. You'll see Paimon will talk about, let's go hide, let's wait for the foxes. And if the foxes don't come today, come back tomorrow and see again. So what we're trying to do is, we try to make some friends with foxes, by feeding them. Initially, they'll be very shy. But if you kill those foxes for meat, guys, you have to restart this whole thing again. So make sure you don't kill them for meat, and you get a hidden achievement, and also a free Quincy Agate. Now for the next 89 Quincy Agates, they're much easier. For the 1 to 79 Quincy Agates, we can use the interactive map. For this particular map, we can basically tag where those locations are, we can go for those, we can also log in with a Google account, usually you can use a domain account, and you can mark those as found. And after logging in and marking those as found, we can easily find all 79 of those. We do not need all 79. What we're looking for is we're looking for 70 of those, to start the tree to level 8. And after getting the Force Bearing Tree to level 8, we can go for the Quincy Wishes. This is a special feature to give us 10 Quincy Agates every week for Monday and Friday for 5 each. If you guys haven't heard of the Quincy Wish, this is a special feature which allows us to have 5 Quincy Agates every week on Monday and also on Fridays. And this is a special feature that gives us 5 different quests for Monday and Friday. After doing those, we can get more Quincy Agates every week. So this should summarize how to get all 90 Quincy Agates. The first 79 will be going with the interactive map. For the next 10, we'll be going for the Quincy Agates with the Quincy Wish. After that, we get the final one from Feeding Foxes for the last Agate. And after completing everything, we can finally achieve level 10 this week before Friday. And this is quite nice. Of course guys, you don't have to collect everything from the map. The goal is try to collect 17 Quincy Agates so we can start the Quincy Wish. After that, we can slowly accumulate with the Quincy Wish. You don't have to collect all 79. But what if you're missing quite a bit of Quincy Agates? This is when you can go for the Foxes for additional Quincy Agate to get to 70. After getting the tree to level 8, 
we can slowly wait for the Queensland Agates for every Monday and also every Friday for those free Queensland Agates quests. Now coming over to this fan clip by Sir Salted. Over here what's gonna happen is, Noah is speaking to an NPC, and all of a sudden there's a blue marker under her and she got struck by lightning. Now if you guys remember, there was an achievement that was really difficult to achieve before this patch. It was to get struck by lightning. And notice how Noah got struck by lightning, and there's a sign be before she was struck in, and this is newly updated. You can predict where the lightning is gonna hit. And because of this, this is a really fun one. We're gonna watch this again, and I'll show you guys with a replay of how to get struck by lightning for the hitting achievement. So she got struck over here. I was like, oh, look at that. Now I did get a lot of messages on Discord, on Twitter, and also on Twitch and YouTube to tell me how to get struck by lightning as well. So thank you for sharing those with me, guys. Now coming over to this replay to get struck by lightning. What's happening is after patch 1.2, before the lightning hits, there is going to be a visual sign on the map, and this will appear 1-2 to two seconds before the lightning hits. So what we want to do is, we want to run as quickly as we can to the lightning side to get struck by lightning. Now this might seem a little random initially, but keep in mind guys, lightning will strike multiple times in the same region. So if you stay in the same location, when it's raining heavily, keep in mind it has to be heavy rain, then you can find way to get struck by lightning by keep running in the same location so over here you can see me running towards different locations i'll be looking for lightnings and this took me less than five minutes keeping in mind i'm testing the time to get struck by lightning so i'm not going anywhere notice i'm still in the same region i'm still looking for lightning i know there are three locations one is behind the rock one is on the road one is next side to the road so i'm waiting for those locations and notice here i'm standing over here to get struck by lightning and there we go, we got it. So knowing the locations of the lightning is really important. You don't have to go to new places. Stay at your current location under the heavy rain weather and actually wait for different locations of the lightnings. It will not be the same location, but it's in the same region. So as long as, long as you're very mobile, look for those signs. And the moment you find it, make sure you go under it and wait for the strike. And there we go, very lovely. And just to show you guys the achievement reward for this one, it is the worth of the gods. You'll be getting 5 Primal Gems for getting struck by lightning over here. Now if you haven't subscribed, this is a really good time to do so. Make sure you also turn the bell on for the latest news as I find more of them for us. You can see that we're really dedicated for Genshin Impact. We'll have builds, guides, tips, news and events updates for everything that's Genshin Impact related. Now coming over to this post by Colorful over here, he translated a particular Japanese video game magazine. And in this magazine, a lot of people were surveyed for Genshin Impact. So basically it's a fine survey about different questions. And if you guys want to have a good look at the survey, definitely check it out. So we're going to some of the fun parts. It talks about the characters you like, characters you want to use, and different characters. And then the question is, which of the female characters would you want to have as your girlfriend? Jean got the highest one, and then we have Kachin, then we have Barbara, and there's some, you know, some replies of those as well. Some of those replies, they also include the age of the male or the female. You can see that, you know, Jean is honest, and she's, and also Kachin is hardworking, Kachin is, has got a really good appearance, and with Barbara, she's really cute, and this one especially, I saw the comments as well, white pantyhose ties are the best. So this is from the 50s male. And after that, we can see who would you like to have your boyfriend. A lot of people says the Luke. Well, that's why. He's tall, he's rich, strong, and handsome. All the 30s males said this. I was like, huh, <laughs> something doesn't seem right. Why aren't they females? So you can also see the Luke with the females with the shoulder of judge justice. And those are translated, by the way. So they're translated from Japanese to English. You can also see Venti. Some people do like Venti. He's quite cute. We can see out of the 1,850 people surveyed, how many people passed the spiral floors, and also how do people think of different food in the game. So this is quite interesting, a little backstory of how people think of Genshin Impact with the Japanese community. Now coming over to this fan clip by Supreme Cat God. So thanks Alberto, very cool. Let's have a look at what happens, and this is quite interesting. So what is happening is our friend here is a vessel that is fighting electrohydrosis and all of a sudden he decided to use our battle to have an elevator. You know how nice would it be an elevator? You're gonna stand on the elevator, you're gonna dodge your attacks and the monsters can't hit you, right? That's what he thought. But the hydrosis is like, run, scissor, paper, rock, take rock. 
and he punched her into oblivion. It's a quite interesting angle that she's falling to, and she's like literally popped outside of the map. And when this happened, I'll give you guys some some of the audios. Basically, Paima proc her to swim back. Nevertheless, for four times, she's like, no, you go back, you go back, you keep going back. So basically, she got popped outside of the map. And, you know, you think you could dodge attacks, but scissors flip a rock, rock beat scissors. And there she goes. <laughs> she flew for like a good like 10 seconds over here. And it was like uncontrollable. I thought this was really fun. So be aware, guys, you cannot dodge the rock punches. You can dodge other attacks, you know, the wolf charges, but you cannot dodge this one. And we also have some really interesting comments over here as well. Point of view, you're the team rocket from Pikachu. And Pikachu goes, Pika Pika P! <laughs> and they use the 10,000 words and KOs you. So there's a lot of fun comments. Electro hypothesis, 10,000, 100,000 words. <laughs> I love the Pokemon analogy as well. So basically the team rocket is like, oh, they flies off with the cat and everyone. This is really fun actually. So lovely to see some of the fan clips. And if you want to try it out with our battle, maybe you can fly off the skies too. Now usually we save the best last, and over here we have a clip by Zekun. Zekun over here is going to show us how to travel with Kachin in the mains into regions which I haven't been to before. So what's going to happen is, let's start this clip, and you can see our friend is locked out of co-op. Sometimes when you play co-op, the players activate the co-op game before you, and you get locked outside. And what you do is, you have to wait for them to finish, then you know, go for loot and do something. But over here he's locked outside. He literally using Kaching, he's gonna travel around the map, and by doing so, he can actually travel to some certain locations, and he's finding secret ways to do so. So this is about a minute long clip of him traveling in the outside of Raging Zone. So those zones are out of bound, but there's no Paimon to push you back. This is quite interesting. I think you might be able possible to do this with Venti, but Kaching is definitely the best one. And he's going to places which I don't even know existed. I was like, you can go there? And you can see over here, he's jumping onto the roots. I'm like, oh, you can go onto the roots too. And the dashes with Kachin is actually extremely interesting. And guess what happened, guys? After about 30 seconds of traveling, he went from the end of the map to the front of the map, basically to the end with the trees. And he's basically waiting for his corp friends to finish the corp so he can loop the tree. And that's pretty interesting, right? So he looped around the domains. And Kachin is so flexible with traveling. And that's so nice to know. I thought this one's interesting. So not only are you finding monsters, you're also traveling around the different designs. And imagine if they had a hidden chest here. That'd be really nice too. And you know, the world is your oyster. Go travel around in the world of Genshin Impact. You never know where it takes you, right? Very, very lovely. Now before we finish this video, I also want to come over to this particular post by the same content creator, Zeke Ku over here, who talked about his content being used on the other channels without getting credits to. So I thought as a special way to make him feel a little better, I can see over here he actually have a YouTube channel. So if you guys are free, come over to his YouTube channel. Let's leave a nice comment in his videos and also thank him for the wonderful work he's sharing with the community. So definitely check out his channel guys, and I'll be leaving a comment after this recording as well. Now if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe and also turn the little bell on for the latest news. I'll be looking towards to make more builds, guides, tips and news and event updates for us as we come further into the game. And as always, I wish you guys the best of luck with Catherine and have the most fun in exploring this wonderful world.